Hi, everybody. Uh, wrapping up a wet and very, very warm day. Crazy. Uh, 67 degrees turned out to be the high temperature on Monday, yesterday. Not only a record for the date, but becoming the warmest temperature all time in the month of December for the PDX record site, which goes back to the early 1940s. So that's crazy. It was 64 degrees at midnight tonight, as uh, last night rather, going into today. That 64 is a record for the day today. And get this, the high yesterday 67, the low on Monday was 56. The two averaged out to be 19 degrees above normal. You don't see that type of a departure hardly ever. That was crazy. And so far today, again, that the record is going to be 64. That was back just after midnight. The low this morning, uh, the low today so far has been 58. Now, I think that may go down a little bit, but probably stay in the 50s, maybe stay in the mid 50s going into tomorrow morning. So crazy, crazy, crazy warm weather. And I'm going to show you some rain totals. But let me tell you that uh, if you go back to last Thursday, when this first wave of rain began, PDX has picked up roughly... 3.75 inches of rain going back to last Thursday. We could add an inch tonight into tomorrow yet. So that would be 4.75. There's another system on Thursday. I think it's got to give us at least a quarter of an inch of rain. So that's going to put us to five inches through the first week of December. Really crazy. Now, you can see uh, on my uh, screen here, I've got the radar. And this has been mostly rain during the day today. The southern edge of the solid rain was down around Corvallis. In fact, Eugene, get this. Eugene did not report rain today, measurable rain. It was around Corvallis and then northward up through Astoria, northward up through Centralia. On the right side here is the current radar showing, again, these elongated pushes of rain that continue to push northward all the way into eastern Washington. This today was a true atmospheric river, a 24-hour period when it's all said and done, that was absolute steady rain. It never let up. And a push of, you know, well over an inch of rain to some areas getting two inches of rain. So the front is going to come in tomorrow morning and put a break to the steady rain. So a fairly short-lived atmospheric river, thank goodness, but certainly a good one. Let me just show you, again, look at the elongated nature of this moisture feed up in the northern California, missing northern California, then up in Oregon here. Now, there is a, here you can see the surface front. So often these atmospheric rivers will form. They bring you this kind of finger or, you know, elongated protrusion of moisture feeding into an area. Often the jet stream comes down right over that same area, and there's a surface front that all this moisture runs over which kind of helps give it that elongated area. The fact that it's running over a surface boundary and the jet stream up top keeps creating lift and just keep the rain machine going. Let me see on this. Um, so on the bottom left is a 500 millibar upper level map and the 464 contour. Yeah, it's right in the Portland. Am I reading that right? I'm looking at my forecast indices sheet. Yeah, 464. That's the main jet stream contour feeding right into us today. Now, if you look, at this next picture, which is kind of a mixed hybrid of a visible and IR picture, you can see clearly there's a, a break to, off to our west. You know, we have a front coming in tomorrow morning, and then we'll get a break in the rain. This little curl right here is going to be developing low that comes into us and brings us some more rain on Thursday. And then this system is going to be approaching on Friday, a day that to me, I, right now, it looks like most of this batch of moisture from the system out to the west Holds off until we get into Saturday, but that will be a rainy Saturday, maybe three quarters of an inch of rain. And that system, look at the instability. That is all lightning being detected out over the Pacific right now where you see those crosses. So really, really nuts. Okay, let's get you going into uh, what I am really uh, focusing on right now. And that is the river flooding that has taken place. I want to show you a couple of comparisons. This was yesterday. Yesterday on this video, I showed you this atmospheric stream that was getting ready to come into us. Now, notice again, the elongated nature and what I call kind of rail track, railroad tracks. There's a definite, you know, northern edge, a definite southern edge, and the moisture keeps coming at you like this. Notice the width or depth of this. That's what fed into us today. Gave us just steady rain, absolute steady rainfall. Here's the update to that same atmospheric stream 
I grabbed this shot just a couple of hours ago. This is today. Now notice, same elongated fats coming into us, but what was this thick is now that thin. So looking at this piece of imagery data alone, you get the idea that this particular atmospheric river is starting to rain itself out and we're getting toward the end of it. Again, the end of it will come, in fact, uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, let's see here. Okay, the update on the National Weather Service warning map, really no update, everything's the same. Everything in that bright green color, Western Oregon, Western Washington, a flood advisory is the wording the Weather Service has chosen to use. And this is up until uh, one o'clock tomorrow night going into 1 a.m. on Thursday. So no news there. Now, what is new is that we have some river flood warnings. I'm just a couple of graphics away from showing you that. These are rain totals just today going back to midnight. Portland 1.10, Salem 0 0.6. There was more in the North Valley than the Mid Valley. And again, Eugene didn't get anything. Astoria, record for the date of 2.20. McMinnville, 72 100s. Kelso had an over, over an inch of rain. These were rain totals today. And the modeling, which has been generally a little too wet, putting out numbers that are a little too big for most of us, still suggesting that we could get an inch of absolute steady rain continuing to fall tonight into tomorrow morning which makes sense. That would put most of the valley up between an inch and a half to about two inches of rain, which was the highest confidence projection from last night through today through tonight. So that actually may turn out to be a pretty good forecast. All right, what else we got? All right, here's that river level flood map. Uh, notice, so everything green is good. That means no river approaching flood stage. Bingo, that's where you want to be. But the colors, the red is bad, definitely seeing some decent flooding. The orange is right around flood stage. The yellow is approaching flood stage. So you can see we've got problem rivers north of our area, up in the central portion of western Washington, and then especially, especially in Tillamook County. So let me get you to the rivers that are experiencing some problems. Remember yesterday, the projection was the Wilson River going into Tillamook, which is always one of the pro problem spots. It's a river that's really quick to go up and quick to go down. This river expected to be right around its crest. As I speak to you right now, the crest projected to be just shy of 17 feet. Flood stage is 12. And according to the National Weather Service website, at 16 to 17 feet, that does put flooding water over some of the low-lying stretches of Highway 101 in the Tillamook County. And of course, a lot of agricultural land underwater. Now, the Weather Service, which I feel like likely has a really good handle on the projected rain that is going into their forecast model yet to come. And even with that said, with the additional rains to come, they still believe that this river will be receding overnight going into tomorrow morning. Be interesting to see if that's true tomorrow morning or not. But certainly once we get through tomorrow, the river definitely will be coming down. And again, Wilson River is quick up and quick down. Let's stick with um, Tillamook County, the Nahalem River near Foss. No flood level near Vernonia, but you get into Tillamook County near Foss. And again, this was the river, the Wilson, that was projected to flood in this portion uh, going into Tillamook County at just over 17 feet this afternoon. Flood stage is 15 feet. Hopefully, it looks like that will be coming down during the day tomorrow. So that's pretty good news. Here's the Grays River. Now, this is up in Waikiaikum County, up near Roseburg, or Rossburg, pardon me, up in Washington. And this was projected to be at its crest earlier this afternoon and is projected to be actually already starting to recede at this hour. Flood stage is 12, and that was 16 feet above that. That's, again, a lot of farmland and some home structures threatened when the water gets that high, according to the National Weather Service feed. Um, I do want to give you the update on what the Willamette's doing. This is uh, below the falls in Oregon City. Bigger river, it's going to take it longer to crest. Again, if you go back to Sunday afternoon, that's when the sharp tick of rising water levels began. 17-foot stage this afternoon. 19.6 is the expected crest. And this is going to happen, looks like, early Thursday afternoon. Now, the flood stage is 27, so thumbs up on that. And then staying high all the way into the weekend, but slowly receding somewhat. Those were all the rivers in our area that are experiencing flood level waters at this time. No other rivers right now are projected to reach flood stage. I checked the Sandy, it's okay. I checked the Clackamas, it's okay. 
Um, now, again, if we get an inch of rain tonight and tomorrow morning, which should be factored into these projections, maybe we're going to see some additional problems or at least some water amounts that stay a little bit higher, a little bit longer. But but really, it looks like for the most part, we're going to get out of this with the usual Tillamook and the Halem Rivers, the Grays River, the rest of us seeing maybe some sloppy standing water. Um, but really no significant problems outside of those typical rivers that I mentioned. So I feel like that's pretty good. You know, the breaks in between the rain that we've had going back to Thursday certainly helped. And overall, the weather models did project a little higher than what the actual rain totals turned out to be. Again, it looks like uh, going back to Thursday right now, PDX was setting at about 3.75 inches. That's a lot of rain, but it's been spread over five days. So that made it a little bit more manageable. So my forecast, a flood advisory through the day tomorrow. We have the morning rain. I think it's still raining steadily when you get up. And then that breaks into showers with the front coming through. Temperatures are going to be steady tomorrow. Wherever it is in the morning, that's kind of where we're going to be. I mean, it could be 56 when you wake up. It could be 52 at 3 in the afternoon tomorrow. And then Thursday, snow levels finally go down. We're going to see snow levels Thursday go down to 3,000 feet. There will be some snow accumulation with another uh, surface system coming in. There'll be some snow at past level Thursday. Portland will be 44 at 49. Latest projections for the Rose City give us about three-tenths of an inch of rain on Thursday, or certainly no more than a half of an inch. That would not stop waters from receding that are, that are doing so on the rivers. Friday, a pretty quiet day. I still think this is a day we just a scattered shower or two around. Lots of dry time. Uh, I like our chances of opening up a sunbreak. Saturday's wet. Latest projections show this could be just a steady rain day for the much of the day a half of an inch to maybe three quarters, low break Sunday morning, potentially. And then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, the weather models are not in agreement. Some modeling suggests that this is all dry weather, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. If so, we get into some cold freezing nights. What I've chosen to do is say that Sunday morning could be dry. There's a PM rain chance. And then I'm telling you that it could be dry, but there's at least a shower chance. And I'm watching on Monday and Tuesday and Monday or Tuesday, rather, I've got us down to uh, to freezing. I do want to show you, let me bounce out of this and show you courtesy of Hillcrest Sales Service and Rentals in Gresham. Thank you. My Mount Hood snow forecast. So tomorrow the snow level goes down. It's been 8,000 feet. Tomorrow morning, 6,500, rain early at Timberline. Then that changes to snow during the day. By evening, the snow level is down to about 4,000 feet. So that's why it's still rain at government camp tomorrow, but maybe Timberline has six inches of snow. And then going into Thursday morning, it snowed down to 3,000 feet over the passes. During the day, it's four to seven inches. Maybe I'm a little high. We'll see. Friday's pretty quiet. And then Saturday is another warm front. That's why Portland gets that steady rain. Warm fronts typically give you the longest period of steady rain, by the way. Cold fronts are usually more narrow, sharp bands. of can be heavier rain, but it quickly comes and pushes through. So Saturday with a warm front, Government camp eventually goes to rain while Timberline and areas at 5,000 feet and higher could get 10 inches of snow. And then Sunday, a pretty quiet day overall, kind of a wet mix and the snow level of uh, 5,000 feet. So that is everything I'm watching. Um, by the way, Timberline, if you're interested, they had about, uh, what, 28 inches, 28 to 30 inches of snow when it fell uh, through the weekend. They're now down to 15 inches. So Timberline has melted half of what fell Government camp has almost melted all of it away. They're down to just a couple inches, and that's kind of sporadic coverage. All right, I'm meteorologist Rod Hill, my weather site, where you can see my updated forecast is portlandweather.com. We had some issues with it loading slow the last couple of days. I think those issues have been fixed. And if you haven't hit subscribe to my YouTube channel, please do so. That will send you a notification when I've posted a new video. It helps me out as well. All right, uh, let's hopefully get through the next 24 hours with no additional flooding problems. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill and I'll talk to you soon.